If you're thinking to yourself, does someone really make a video game out of a font? Then the answer is yes. Yes, they did. I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. There are actually multiple endings depending on your choices, and you can go download it for yourself and try playing it right now if you want. But let's talk about fonts because computer fonts are quite a bit more complex than they might appear. Here's a font that comes on Macs, Zapfino. It's pretty cool because it looks cool and it has some neat tricks. If you type certain letter combinations, they morph into a special form for those combinations. If you type the name of the font itself, you even get a nifty special form for the whole word. These are called glyph substitutions, where the font says that certain combinations of glyphs should be replaced by another glyph. At this point, the gears in your head are probably turning trying to figure out how you make this into a game. The creator himself has an overview of how it works. Basically, as long as you type your input for the game, the font substitutes the string of letters with one big glyph of the whole scene. This is done without any variables or normal programming logic, because even though there theoretically is a way to write code like that in a font file, nobody thought that was a good feature to support, so it doesn't actually work in practice. So every single frame that you see in the game is a different glyph defined in the font. In the font code, there is a giant list of rules that says, if you have frame 1 followed by any letter, then show frame 2 instead. If you have frame 2 followed by any letter, show frame 3 instead. And where you have a choice, then the rules are frame x followed by a is frame y, frame x followed by b is frame z, and frame x followed by anything else is the error scene. To save space, a couple things are done. First, sprites are defined as subroutines so that they can be reused across the font. If we see something moving in the game, that's the font reusing the same subroutine in different positions. Second, the creator made some game design decisions knowing that there's a limit on how many glyphs and rules you can have. So the game plays like a choose-your-own-adventure game where you have pretty limited freedom over what's going on. It would be pretty hard to make, say, Mario with this technique because there's a huge number of different possible scenes and there'd be no way to fit all the different paths the player could take into a font file. Anyways, if creating a video game in a font file sounds like something you want to do, the creator shows how he made the game in Blender and even provides the add-on he made along with a tutorial on how to use it. It's worth checking out and the link is on screen as well as in the description below.